and gentlemen, my first guest tonight is a political analyst for MSNBC and host of The Readout. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Joy Reid. <laughs> people here, yes. <laughs> um, uh, thanks so much for being here. Always great to be here. Good to see you. There's so much to talk about. And yes. you're, you know, come on, real news person. <laughs> you know, we make our jokes, ha ha. But some serious stuff is going on. Yeah. Yesterday, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin put 8,500 troops on heightened alert. From what you have learned, what does heightened alert mean? Have they moved from, like, decaf to regular? <laughs> what, what, what does that actually mean? I'm sure they are definitely moving to regular because mm -hmm. it's stressful. I mean, and, you know, we were looking this up just on the show. I mean, the last time we've been on this much of an alert for U.S. troops to take action, mm -hmm. you know, in, in on the European continent was, like, Kosovo. You know, it was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. It is a serious situation. The USS Harry Truman is in the Mediterranean right yeah. now, you know, flying with a NATO fleet. Yeah. And that hasn't happened since the... Cold War. It, it, it is frightening, but the thing is, what's interesting, you know, one of our great um, international reporters, Matt Bradley, is actually in Kyiv, and in that in that in that city, they're not panicking. You know, the panic is all external. At least the vibe inside of you know Ukraine right now is, look, we're constantly under this threat. Russia is constantly threatening us. We are going to live our lives. I know that's what I get from it. Not that there's nothing wrong, but they're like, at this point, what are you worried about? <laughs> They're, they're treating it kind of the way a lot of Americans are treating COVID. Like, yeah, you know, I, uh, uh -huh. you know. But this is, the thing is that this is not the, this, if, if uh, Vladimir Putin goes in, is it true that it has to happen fairly soon if he does because of something about the terrain in the eastern Ukraine? Yeah, there's issues with the terrain. And also, I mean, honestly, this is a country that is not exactly doing well economically, right? Like, Russia doesn't have a lot going for it. So, I mean, the, the sanctions could hurt them. You know, <laughs> Vladimir Putin himself is quite rich, you know, allegedly, and made billions of dollars. But, you know, his country's relatively poor. It's sort of a sort of declining oil oligarchy. So, it's not as if this is a smart move for him. It's not a, it's not a wise move. If he did it, he'd have to do it quickly. And the ramifications would be brutal for him. So, you know, it just goes to show you that he's really not all, he's not all right. Well, what does the smart money say about the possible dumb decision of doing this? Like, what yeah. is the motivation? Is there a sense of what that is? It's kind of difficult to say. I mean, if you kind of look at you know, Putin as a personality, he's someone who, at least the analysts that we put on, that we talk to, they talk about this complex that he has. He can't get over the fall of the USSR. He longs for the, you know, he's an old KGB guy. Mm -hmm. And he can't, his ego, his sort of sense of self, can't get past the fact that, in his mind, he should be a, a great power equal to the United States. And he wants respect. It's sort of very similar to Kim Jong-un. It's sort of, he needs to feel important. And so he makes these moves because he is afraid that these countries like Ukraine that used to be aligned with the old Soviet empire want to be with the West. They don't want to be on his team, and he can't take it. I, I'm old enough to remember the truism that every Soviet leader would try to test a new president of the United yeah. States, to basically do, do an acid test to see mm -hmm. what the reaction would be to Soviet aggression. Yeah. Could it be part of that, too? Just to say, like, who, what are we dealing with here going out into the future? What, I need to know now before his presidency continues. And I think, it's, I think it's especially true after the previous president, who was such a toady, to, to Putin and, you know, and sucked up to him. Um, well, that gets me to my... That takes me to my next question is, what do you make of the Republicans out there who are... And there, there may be others, but it seems to come from the right, saying that we should be supporting Russia, that they've got a reason to do this, that yeah. why are we treating that as a bad thing if Russia goes in? Do you have any idea of where that comes from? Because it seems like a pretty... Big flip it is. for the people who are worried about communism taking over the United States. You know, it's interesting that, you know, there are a lot of ways in which I think Donald Trump just exposed things about the United States that maybe we didn't want to know about ourselves. Mm -hmm. But this is the one fundamental way that he changed it. I mean, the idea that you have people like Tucker, literally, he appears on Russian state TV more than most Russian anchors do. He's, they're playing his clips back because he's on their side. The fact that Donald Trump has led a political party that had Ronald Reagan as their previous sort of patron saint, 
into the arms of Russian propaganda, into the arms of Russia's view of the world, that he flipped that party. I mean, there are Russian members of Congress who are getting frantic, angry phone calls in their offices demanding that they side with Russia, saying Russia's got reasonable demands and that we should give in to them. I mean, that is one way in which Donald Trump's really sycophancy to Russia has infected that entire party. They literally want us to side with, with Russia against Western interests. And it also is, I think, the good news of it is that what this shows is that in one way, when President Biden says America is back, he's right in the sense that it's clear to Russia that NATO is back, that we're back in line with our traditional allies. That is something that you sort of forget because... <laughs> Americans don't keep foreign policy on their mind right. that much, yeah. is that there was a real degradation of our That's NATO right. alliance under the previous president, yes. and then Joe Biden has spent a year getting that back together. That's right. Okay, a potential war with Russia is tough enough for your average Monday, yeah. but yesterday, perhaps just as hard, Joe Biden felt it necessary to apologize <laughs> to Peter Ducey <laughs> for calling him on a hot mic. Yeah. A stupid son of a bitch. When it is, when is it appropriate for a president to call a reporter a stupid son of a bitch? C can I just tell you, I feel like this Republican crowd could not have survived Lyndon Baines Johnson. I mean, Lyndon Johnson used to say, come in here, I'm on the toilet. I need you, uh, member of Congress or Senator, come talk to me now. I I'm going to flush before I'm done. Like, right, total they, power play. Total power play. I mean, this guy was vulgar. I mean, I'm sure he called people much, of, much worse than a, than a son of a bitch. I mean, the idea that there's the snowflakery about people who love to say, let's go Brandon. Mm -hmm. But it's like, oh my God, you can't call Peter Deuce. You can't, I mean, really? Grow up, y'all. Come on. That's not the worst thing a president. John McCain has said worse. Get over it. These are adults. They're all adults. We have to take a quick break, but stick around. When we come back, I will ask Joy about the press's coverage of Biden. Stick around.